All right, Shalom, Machim, Zahad, Spirit, we and Judah of the GMS Mississippi Camp, giving our honor and glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Chakudash. I also want to give double honors to our elder apostles and elder bishops, great millstone, Ruel. All right, peace and blessing, health and wellness to the house of David the elect. All right, today I want to go into a topic entitled, What is His Name? All right, what is His Name? And I'm just going to keep it simple through the Spirit, all right, make an effort to keep it simple. All right, we're just going to get straight into it. This is Exodus 6 and 3. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name God Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. So we're going to get into that name, Jehovah. All right, and we go into the word Jehovah. All right. All right, that's Strong's H, 3068. Strong's H, 3068. And this is this, this is the Assyrian Hebrew. And what we have here is the name Yahawa. Yahawa. All right. And if you break it down, that first character in the Hebrew is Yah. All right. And that second character is pronounced Ha. All right. And that third character is Wa. And the fourth character is Ha again but you connect the third and fourth character all right so the third and fourth character collectively creates a sound uh wah wah so it's ya ha wah ya ha wah all right ya ha wah ya ha wah okay that's that's the pronunciation of the name of Yahweh, all right, all right, and as you can see on the King's on the King James translation count, it says King James translates Strong's thirty sixty eight in the following manner, all right, and it has these different words that Strong's thirty sixty eight Yahweh, all right, is translated to, all right. So when you see the word Lord in all caps, that goes back to Strong's that goes back to Strong's 3068. All right. As you can see, it has the word H 3068 next to it. Now I just click on it. All right. But as you can see, all right, it has all right the same Strong's number. All right. The Lord in all caps. All right. Same word. Yah. Ha wa, ya ha wa. All right. Once again, it says the King James under under KJV translation count. Right. The King James version translates Strong's thirty sixty eight in the following manner. All right. All caps Lord, the word God all caps. So when you see the word God all caps. That also goes back to Strong's 3068. All right. So I'm going to get a scripture that has the word God in all caps. All right. Genesis 6 and 5. All right. Just as an example. All right. It said, and God, all caps, Strong's 3068. Yah, ha, wah. Yah ha wa. All right. Yahawa. All right. So as we know that we don't have to get into it, but the letter J, all right, does not exist in the Hebrew. All right. It's actually the, the letter uh, Y or Yah. There's no Ja. There's a Yah. All right. And also there's no O sound in the Hebrew. All right, is this ah? All right, ya ha. All right, let me get back to it. Let me go back to Exodus. All right, so you might wonder what about the V? Okay, let's get back to the base breakdown. All right, Yahweh. All right, what about the V? So we're going to get into the history of the uh, letter V. It says the V. All right, it's the 22nd and 5th to last letter in the modern English alphabet and the ISO basic Latin alphabet. 
Let's get into the history. All right. History. It says the letter V comes from the Semitic letter Y. The, the letter V comes from the Semitic letter Y. Okay. So going back to that Strong's 3068, all right, which was mistranslated Jehovah, or it is actually Yah Wa. All right. And historically, you've had false scholars, all right. Of Edom making an effort to cover that name, all right, all right, and to obscure that name, man. But the true name is Yahweh, okay. So, furthermore, I'm just gonna get some examples, all right, because you're going to the history, it basically breaks down that the original word Yahweh was uh, replaced with Adawan, which means Lord. Which is why you have the word Lord in place of Yahweh. But if you get to the say for example, the Jehovah's Witness, all right, translations, all right, or the edition of the Bible, they replace Lord back with the name of the Most High in this English mistranslation. All right, so for example, this is Psalms 110 and 1 from the New World Translation, which is the Jehovah's Witness translation. Before I get it, let me actually get, all right, the King James Version, all right, of Psalms 110 and 1, which we all know what that says, all right, Psalm 110, all right. It says, And the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou in my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool, all right. But it says, The Lord said unto my Lord, which that can be confusing to read really to get face value. But like I said, I want to get the Jehovah Witness edition of Psalms 110 and 1. And it says, Jehovah declared to my Lord, which it declared to Yahweh Shai, that's who King David's Lord is, sit in my right hand until I place your enemies as a stool for your feet. All right? So with the New World Translation, which is the Jehovah Witness uh, edition of the, the scriptures, everywhere where you have Strong's 3068, they just straight up have the word Jehovah, which we know we break it down. It goes back to the word Yahweh. So in original context, that shows you that the word Yahweh was written all throughout the scriptures. All right. Now, the Masoretes will have you think that those vowel points was taken from Adonai, but that was misinformation because there's always been uh, there's always been um, an agenda to obscure the name, to take the name. From Israel, because only through confessing the name will the um, will we come back into power. Or will He undo our captivity? Okay, the name is very important. All right, it brings fear to the heathen, and the, the thing that brings even more fear is us calling on His name. Us, as in the twelve tribes of Israel, starting with the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Okay, it says Yahweh declared to my Lord, "Sit in my right hand." Let me drink some water. Sit at my right hand until I place your enemies as a stool for your feet. All right. Yahweh will extend the scepter of your power out of Zion, saying, Go subduing in the midst of your enemies. But as you can see, the word Jehovah, all right, is all throughout the scriptures in the in a New World Translation, which is the Jehovah's Witness uh, edition of the Bible. Okay. So, as we know, all right. That there is no Jehovah, all right? But that's the mis mistranslation of Yahweh, all right? So you have translation and transliteration. And that's very important to note. Transliteration is using the, uh, the letters in your language to pronounce the word of another language, okay? <laughs> Not the meaning, but the word, okay? All right, another example is Isaiah 26, all right? And let me get that in the, the blue letter so you can see the contrast. Right, Isaiah 26 and 4, because there are four scriptures where you have to straight up put the name Jehovah because it would be inconvenient to put the word Lord there because it'll be mentioned twice. All right, and these are four examples. The first one we already read, that's the scripture that we open up with, Exodus 6 and 3. But the other one is Psalms 83 and 18. That men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. 
but we don't have to get into it, but I, I guess I could go in and get it again. That Jehovah goes back to what? All right, Strong's 3068, Yahweh. All right? So there are four places in the scriptures where it was inconvenient to replace Jehovah with Adawan or Adonai or Lord because it would have been it would have been using the same word for his name. All right? That his name alone is Jehovah, okay? Which is Yahweh. All right? But as we've shown you in the Hebrew that that word literally goes back to Strong's 3068, Yahweh. All right? His name is Yahweh. And I'm just with that, I want to just close it out with um uh, let me get the scripture in Baruch. All right. Let me get the scripture in Baruch. Just go to a new tab. Okay. Baruch. So you, you think the most I'll make it some big uh most I'll make it some big mystery. All right, what his name is. If he made it some big mystery, all right, what his name was, then that's a conflict in prophecy, man. But right now, they're saying that the prophecy isn't real, man, or is is not one hundred percent complete, man. The Most High is not like man. See, Esau creates this thing. You have new speak. You have draw gun. All right, and you have you have gray areas. You know when politics get to talking. You know it's never definite. It's never black or white. It's always gray areas and technically, and there's a possibility. And if you you know. All these great areas, man. So you're just conditioned to believe that in life, there is no yes or no. There's always technically and there's a possibility and some scholars say this. No, there's, there's, that's called obscuring the truth, man. All right? All right? And let me get to the point. This is Baruch 2 and 30. For I knew that they would not hear me. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they should remember themselves. All right. And should know that I am the Lord, their power, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. How can we think upon his name if we don't know his name? And it's that simple. We're thinking upon the name Yahweh. Why? Yahweh Shai. Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. We think upon his name. We meditate on his name. We praise his name in the land of our captivity. And with that, I hope you brothers and sisters were edified. Once again, I want to give our honor and glory to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Chakodash, that my honors to our elder apostles and elder bishops, the great minister on Ruel. Peace and blessing, health and wellness. To the house of David the elect. And with that, <clears throat> a Baba Bob, come here, Shalom, Shalom.